is a remarkable finish. Burke, Burke goes for the corner and Leah Burke's in. And it's Tamsin Renew, the pass from Harley Dodd. And this could be the first goal of the game because London are going to get them and touch down. He's gone for the same ball and it's gone. Oh, beautiful. They might score the winner. And North Wales have another. Brings it up to the line, drops it off to Hazard who reaches through. Well, good evening and welcome to the Sportsman Rugby League. It's an absolute privilege to round off what has been an already incredible weekend of Rugby League with live coverage of this Betfred Challenge Cup tie between Swinton Lions and Oldham. Alongside me, Kevin Brown. Kev, a proper Sunday evening cracker on the, on the cards here. It is. It's a proper Challenge Cup tie, a derby match. And, and, you know, it's difficult to predict. We've got a championship side against a, a League One side who have heavily recruited in the off-season. So we've spoke a couple of times, who do we think favourites? And, you know, we've split, really. We're, we both think Swinton will be a, a tough challenge, but Oldham could get the spoils today. Yeah, it's a, a rare, dry evening here in Sale. Haywood Road, home of the Swinton Lions. Pitch looks in good condition, considering some of the weather we've had recently all set for an absolute belter of a cup tie. And as Kev mentioned, there are some big names on both sides of the ball. Oldham especially, as Kev said, have recruited heavily in the off-season. We've already picked up a couple of scouts this season in the the, uh, the likes of Halifax and Barrow in the last round, aiming to knock off another championship team. Sheffield Eagles at home is the prize. Whoever wins this one, the last tie of the round, of course. So Sheffield Eagles will travel to whoever wins this game and then of course the round after that round six the big boys come into it the betfred super league clubs join the challenge cup but kev there's just something magical about this competition especially at this stage isn't there there is it's, it's what makes the cup special it's i think it's what we have in england over australia the history the heritage both these clubs will be looking you know not to win the cup i think realistic amb ambitions will be to to progress to that uh, Super League sides when they come in and try and get a, a mouthwatering tie and get some, you know, well used income from the ticket sales of a big club coming to town so there is a lot at stake today and when you look down these sides there's a lot of Super League experience, there's a lot of champions ex championship experience too so it's going to be a cracker, there's head to heads all over the field and, you know, a couple that I'm looking at um, straight away is Dan Abram and uh, Logan Astley and then Elijah Taylor up against Lewis Hall but the one that I think um, is the most mouthwatering is, is deck pattern against Danny Craven both great kickers both Super League you know they've won things in the past as well so yeah there's there's head-to-head matchups all over the field and it's going to be a cracker plenty of experience in the dugouts as well let's get the views from the head coaches Alan Kilshaw and Sean Long on paper, you'd look at this championship versus League One and uh, and kind of have you guys as favourites, but this is going to be as tough as, as any game, isn't it, when you look at Oldham's squad? Yeah, of course, we recruited some good players, some ex-Super League and, and some championship players, putting a championship squad together, it looks like, to to hopefully sail through League One this year, but that won't be without its challenges. Um, but we're more focused on us. Um, you know, we, we always apply an 80-20 rule, 80% us, 20% them. We know what threats they'll have, um, but we also know there's some weaknesses there that we need to try and expose and manipulate, so we're, we're more, you know, like I say, focused on us than them today. How much confidence are you taking from your performances in the Challenge Cup so far and, of course, the 1895? Yeah, a lot. I've seen some really good signs and we're, we're nowhere near the finished article, but, you know, we've recruited well as well and sort of under the radar at the minute and I'm happy to be there. And in terms of the players in your squad, plenty of Challenge Cup pedigree, of course. How, how important is that experience when you get to days like these? Yeah, it's, it's more so in the week as well. Um, you know, we, we, we try and get the, the, the group to uh, you know, have, a, have a big say and, and, and govern themselves. You know, that's the, sort of the culture we, we want to get. And yeah, there's some, some, some players in there who've won Challenge Cups in deck and then Reese Williams has played at Wembley and things like that. So... Um, you know, we're just more focused about the 80 minutes than the actual, you know, the, the 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 bigger prize. But yeah, definitely that experience helps. And in terms of the timing of this game, as we, as we build into the start of the championship season, how pleasing is it to have such a competitive 80 minutes ahead of you, uh, and still be three or four weeks out away from the start of, of round one? Yeah, really good. I mean, I'm not a big fan of friendlies. We only had one, and these comp competitive games are good. 
Um, it's just finding that right balance, obviously, with the 1895 Cup as well. We, we play next week. We just want to do well in every competition we play in and every game we want to compete in, and uh, that's no different today. Oldham put in strong performances against the likes of Halifax and Barrow from the Championship. How, how much have you been able to learn from, from what they did against them and, uh, uh, and maybe kind of learn from the mistakes of their opponents? <laughs> yeah, of course, myself, Paul and, and Darren will always look at that detail in the week um, and, and preview them. And, and um, like I say, we, we can learn... I think even Rochdale did some good stuff against them last week. Like I say, you know, it's about us, and if we can, you know, impose our game on them, manipulate them in the areas we want to, um, then we can put them under pressure. And we do see some some frailties there. Um, I'm sure they'll be saying the same thing in their changing room as well about us. Big crowd expected. We'll be kicking off around sunset. So we're playing this game under the lights. It could have a bit of a special atmosphere, couldn't it, this evening? Yeah, it should do. Yeah, um, the witness game had a, a good crowd on, and that was you know a local derby in sorts. And, and this will be no different. I think it'll be better here today. The, the the crowd and yeah, you know, there's a buzz around both teams, and I expect you know that to uh, be at the forefront um, when we kick off. Well, best of luck tonight. Cheers, mate. Well, Sean. The next stage of the Betfred Challenge Cup, an opportunity for you guys to test yourself against Championship opposition again. What do you make of this afternoon's challenge? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, we've had a couple of tests, big tests against the likes of Halifax and uh, Barrow, uh, and we're going to have to step it up again to, to today. And when you look at the, obviously the experience in your squad, they'll be very used to playing in these games. Is that a real luxury for you? Yeah, it helps. It definitely helps. You know, the prep this week has all been about us, um, and obviously working on our discipline. We want to be the most disciplined team in the comp. You know, because you know, challenge cup games, it's a knockout football. Um, you know, it could be a ref's decision or something like that. Go either way. So, you know, it's it's do or die. So we're going to put our best foot forward. Uh, we're not getting too far away now from Super League teams entering the Betfred Challenge Cup. Obviously, we've got to get through this in another round. But does that make does that kind of make it incrementally more exciting as you get through the competition? Yeah, obviously, every game is really important for us. You know, going forward, and you know, we're in this competition, and lads have had the experience in you know JT and Joe Wardle and people like that. Yeah, and and it means a lot. It means a lot to the town, and we want to stay in it as long as we can. And you know. Fingers crossed, you know, we, we get the result we want. It's going to be, we know it's going to be a hard battle, but uh, it'd be nice to get a Super League team, you know, to Boundary Park. And it's a, it's a dry evening for a change. The pitch looks in reasonable conditions. There won't be any excuses out there. You must be expecting a, a quite an intense battle in, in what will be a good atmosphere as well. Yeah, I've watched a few of Swinton's games and uh, the, the real dogged team work hard for one another. So I think, you know, we've just got to play our normal game and not get dragged into any form of uh, shenanigans. And in terms of what, what Swinton offer, what's your analysis been like of them in the week? Yeah, um, like I said, work hard for each other. Uh, defensively strong, uh, so we're going to have to play a bit, uh, move the ball around a little bit, early doors, and then I think defending deck patterns, kicking game, you know, he's pivotal to... Uh, well, best of luck this evening. Thanks very much. Nice Cheers. one. Cheers, Sean. Cheers. So that's the views of the two head coaches ahead of this Betfred Challenge Cup tie. A brisk evening, but a really good crowd and atmosphere building around us. Let's have a look at the starting lineup. Starting off with the home side, Swinton Lions. They line up with Dan Abraham at fullback, Matty Crimes, and Reese Williams, who scored that historic try in that COVID Cup final a few years ago for Salford. They're the wingers, Jake Spedding and Jaden Hatton make up the three-quarter line in the centres. Declan Patton, another one with experience of playing in Challenge Cup finals. He's joined by Jordan Gibson in the halves. A front row of Mikey Wood, Josh Eaves and Gavin Benyon, accompanied by Gavin Rodden, Mitch Cox and Lewis Hall, the loose forward in the pack for Swinton and on the interchange bench. George Roby, Daniel Spencer-Tonks, Jordan Case, and Andy Badrock provide the reinforcements for the home side. Sean Long put together a very, very strong looking squad ahead of the League One campaign. An opportunity to against championship opposition this afternoon. They start off with Logan Astley at fullback. Moa Goro provides some pace out on the wing. He's joined by Jack Johnson on the other edge with Ben O'Keefe and Jordan Turner in the centre as a half back pairing. Plenty of experience in Super League and the Championship in Danny Craven and Jamie Ellis. Owen Farmworth, Matty Wildey, 
Jay Chappell out, make up the front row with Joe Wardle, Adam Lawton and Elijah Taylor completing the pack for the visitors. And coming off the bench, more Super League experience in Craig Kocak, Ted Chappellhout, Pat Moran and Josh Johnson. And Kev, when you just look down both of those lineups, sprinkled with talent and experience and abundance. Yeah, and a great balance to both sides. They've got size, they've got great three quarters and pace. Really looking forward to watching Mo Moa Goro live. Seen a couple of his tries, full length of the field effort so far. But yeah, the, the battles of the halfbacks too. But yeah, really interested to see how Elijah Taylor, a player I played with, you know, plays in this Oldham side. He does all the hard work, very similar to a player like Isaiah Yo, who we saw last night in the World Cup Challenge for the Penrith Panthers. He's a ball player, but he will do the hard stuff as well. So interesting to see how he goes. But I think the start of the game, I think it'll be a physical contest. Like we mentioned before, there's a lot at stake and both clubs will want to progress to the next round. And the, the two halfback pairings, Deck Patton, <coughs> Jordan Gibson, Danny Craven and Jamie Ellis, loads of experience in there and, and players that are, are going to be crucial, especially at, 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 it feels in the early stages of this game. Yeah, the halfbacks, and, and they're accompanied by the, the nines and the ones as well. The spines for both sides are, you know, very, very well put together. And I think Alan Kilshaw and Sean Long, the recruitment that they've done, you know, in the off season to get the likes of Deck Patton and the likes of uh, the Swinton. And obviously the whole makeup of the side for Sean Long has completely changed. So I'm sure they're still working it out and they're still figuring out the combinations, but it's a mouthwatering amount of talent, you know, down both sets of squads. So I think it'll be a cracker job um, today and, and hopefully Lewis that um, you know the fans enjoy this one. You mentioned Moa Goro on the wing for Oldham. How about Reese Williams on the wing for Swinton? Obviously someone that you all know well from your your playing days. Uh, 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 a real wealth of experience in there, but also still a fantastic athlete. Yeah, an international, obviously a Welsh international and, and one of Wales's best ever servants. I think, you know, he's he's always been underrated for me, Reese Williams. I think some of the stuff he does is electrifying. You, you referred to the try he scored in the Challenge Cup final against the Leeds Rhinos. And there's not many players in the world of rugby that could have done that. And he does that time and time again. But what I really like about Reese Williams is you don't see him have a bad game. If he doesn't have a great game, he has a you know a seven or eight out of ten. He never has a, a shocker, so to speak. So, fantastic, fantastic player and someone I'm sure Alan Kilshaw, the coach of the Swinton Lions, is really pleased to have around this side. When you look at the forward packs, you mentioned Elijah Taylor in the pack for Oldham, but Adam Lawson in there as well. A lot of size. Joe Wardle, Owen Farmworth, players that are going to pack a real punch, and, and that's going to be perhaps where the real battle is for Swinton. It is, and, and you throw in Elijah Taylor, and then the bench, the bench is huge. It's it's three front, it's four front rowers, in fact. It's Moran, Johnson, Chapel, and Kopchak, and Kopchak probably being the, the most experienced and the biggest man. But I like the balance of the pack. I think you've got punching in Adam Lawton and Joe Wardle, but you've got great in terms of Elijah Taylor. He's going to mop all the defensive work up. Jay Chapel are the same, so... But I'm really looking forward to seeing Owen Farmworth again. He's a hit man in backside. There is plenty of size in that Swinton pack, of course. Gavin Bennion, former Salford Red Devils, Welsh international. And coming off the bench for them, George Roby at nine. He'll look to, to really bring a spark when he's introduced. Daniel Spencer Tonks, uh, a Salford Reserves product. He's been obviously in, in, in a good system there. And it's just, it feels like there's a, a lot of players who are going to entertain us tonight, Kev. Yeah, and you, you mentioned George Roby and, and the, the spoiled for choice with the hookers, the Swinton side. They've got Josh Eves, who's obviously played at Saints and Newcastle, amongst others, and George Roby, who started his career at Warrington and has played Super League for Huddersfield. So there's some cracking, cracking talent amongst them. I think they're a little bit more work, workmanlike in the pack, sprinkled with a bit of quality in the hookers um, in that Swinton pack. Well, here come the Swinton Lions in front of the Rawkers home crowd. And of course, the Betfred Challenge Cup, one of the most beautiful trophies in any sport. That is what is at the end of the road in this competition, of course. But tonight, a little bit of local bragging rights on the line on top of everything else. A home tie against Sheffield Eagles is the prize tonight as Oldham follow them out. And there is a real electric atmosphere building around us here at Haywood Road. We've had a good look at the teams. The crowd are well up for this one. There's been some belting games between these two sides historically over the years. I think we're all set for another absolute cracker tonight under the lights, not the warmest. 
but some brilliant entertainment on the menu. And there, is, there, there is a real buzz around here in the Lewis. I think it's going to real feed onto the players, onto the field, especially at the opening. You know, a couple of minutes and, and the opening contest off this kickoff. I'm really excited to see. I think it'll be Owen Farnworth who carries this ball straight and direct, and he will need to be stopped by the Swinton pack. So Cameron Worsley <coughs> with the man in the middle with the job of overseeing this game. It will be Oldham who get first taste of the football. Lewis Hall stood over the kicking tee, ready to get us underway. So here we go, Betfred Challenge Cup action, live and exclusive on the Sports and Rugby League. Swinton Lions against Oldham, it's championship against League One, but as we've just said, I think you can rip up the form books, rip up the odds for this one. This looks very, very evenly matched on paper. So here we go, Lewis Hall gets us underway, Oldham, We'll get first taste of the football. And Jordan Turner immediately comes up with an error. And then another one. So we'll go back to the first knock on. And straight away, Kevin Swinton with an absolute gift of an opportunity. Yeah, Jordan Turner, probably the most experienced, the captain of the side. I think he's a player coach, in fact. But if he was coaching the team, he'd have been saying, make sure we can start the game well. And, and unfortunately, it just bounced off his chest. I'm not sure. I think he changed his mind from he was going to catch and pass to catch and run. And then at that moment, as he moved forward, it bounces off his chest. And that's a great start for the Swinton Lions. They're going to get the ball in a perfect position and try and put some points on in the opening set. So they take the scrum in the middle of the field, right underneath the sticks, options left and right, just hold the ball a little bit in the back. They come out to the left, Patton swings the ball out immediately, looking for that edge. Dan Abram wrapped up. He looked really sharp in the warm-up. And we're going to come back, not sure... It's going to be another scrum to Swinton. I think the referee may be you know, just resetting things. Not entirely sure why. It may be just that ball getting stuck in there. But we're going to do it all over again. And we'll see if Swinton go with the same ploy. Again, a little bit slow coming out. It does come to the left. And again, Patton brings it up to the line. It brings it out to the left-hand side. And Abram is straight through. And what a start for the Swinton Lions. A huge hole opened up in the defence. And Dan Abram on the spot to race through and open the scoring and just a minute 30 on the clock and Swinton Lions take the lead and you've got to say that's poor defending by Oldham they'd already shown the hand in the previous set what they were going to do deck pattern he pulls the exact same player to the exact same person in Dan Abram who scores a try and I'm reliably told by one of the statsmen here in the club that that's his 500th point for the club and you can see why when he's got so much pace and ability with ball in hand but big mistake from Jordan Turner, gave them the chance and they punished him on the opening play. Well, as you say, they almost had the dress rehearsal of this, with the scrum being reset. They didn't do a huge amount different, really nice work from Patton coming up to the line. And it's a Goro who's just caught in two minds about whether to stick or twist. And Abraham doesn't need asking twice, straight through. And all the talk... Oh, Goro's got to go in there, hasn't he, Lewis? He's got to come in and shut that player down. He's almost slid out and opened the whole earth for Abraham. And the kick from the touchline is spot on. A perfect start for the Swinton Lions. And all the talk have coming into this was about Oldham looking to, to cause another upset. All of a sudden, a couple of minutes in, they find themselves behind straight away and a, a real confidence boost for Swinton as well. It is, and you can just see there's a little bit of shell shock and the crowd here now are really cheering Swinton. You know, they couldn't have expected a better start. They've not been tackled once with the ball and they're up six points to nil. And what I do know about Deck Patton, you know, he is a confidence player like no other player I've known. If things are going well, he'll be the best player on the field. Jamie Ellis gets us back underway. Swinton with the ball in hand again. Oldham find themselves six points down, having not touched the football. Swinton, you would expect, will just look to keep this simple in this set, get themselves out of yardage and put a kick in, but they are looking over to those edges straight away. Certainly plenty of intent from the home side early on. Zeeves brings us over to the right-hand side. Good shot by Wilder. Going to keep it tight again. Lewis Hall on this occasion, just making a few extra metres. Coming up to the halfway line. 
And Eves brings us out to the left hand side. The kick comes in from Patton. It's a high one, spiraling. And in the end, really well taken by Logan Astley, the Oldham fullback. A settler after that early mistake. That was a great take. For a turner, and then a penalty. We'll bring Oldham Astley. back up the field. He, he was a junior at Wigan Warriors, and he was a he was a halfback by trade. But I think because of the quality of Craven and Ellis and the experience of them two, he has found himself playing predominantly a fullback for the Oldham club. But on that occasion, he looked brilliantly at the back, the way he caught the ball and won the penalty for his team. Now it's Oldham's turn to build a little bit of pressure, and hopefully can come away with some points. Well, it is the trend at the moment, isn't it, to have a fullback that is almost a, an extra half at a pivot. Oldham looking to get themselves back to parity as early as possible. Owen Farmworth with that carry. Now Ellis brings it up to the line. Here's Elijah Taylor playing in Super League just a few seasons ago, of course, with the Salford Red Devils. Wildy shoots out from dummy half and gives it to Wardle. Wardle stopped 10 metres away from the Swinton line. Oldham eyeing up a perfect response here. Taylor again. Met well by the Swinton defence, but still makes some post-contact metres. Settles under the sticks. Wildy has options left and right. Comes over to the left. Now they look to go out the back. Astley met well. Oh, Swinton but mop it up. And there's a chance on the break here. It was Mitch Cox mopping up possession and he's brought down but Swinton survived the first real examination of their line. Yeah, and it was a, it was a great bit of defending who put Logan Ashley under pressure and it was almost panic from the young fullback. He tried to get the pass away and they were lucky though that Jack Johnson, probably one of the quickest on the field, you know, was able to get back and scramble and tackle Mick Cox before he could really open up. So he's at play the ball, brings it over to the right hand side. Swinton already up to halfway. So good meters being made in this set for the Lions. Ball just drops it off to Benyon on Five. the trash. He brings it up to the 40 meter line. Carrying it really strong, Benyon. Norman sets. Patton puts another spiral and kick out for a go row to deal with, and he just about regains possession. In fact, the ball's come loose, and it's going to be Swinton who mop it up again. And an opportunity for them to extend their lead, just 10 metres or so out. They come short. They've shown early on, Swinton, that they're here to, to play a bit of football, bring the ball wide. Patton again swings a, a ball out to the right-hand side. Abraham keeps it in hand this, on this occasion. Just slips, ball down about eight metres short. Got to act in half. Brings it out to the left-hand side. And Benyon again, just sticking it up the jumper, met well by the Oldham defence. Real patient approach and build up in this opening set down here. Eves brings us out to the left. Here's Patton. He's really bringing it up to the line, isn't he, Patton? Every time he, he gets his hands on the ball, he's engaging the defensive line and then playing it deep. Eves, Patton again, just switches it back on the inside to Mikey Wood. Slow play the ball in the end. Yeah. Oldham's defence doing well. Well, Elijah doing Taylor's a little bit too play, much. Yeah, a lot too much there. I thought, I thought he were lucky, you know, to be allowed. Like you said, it was a, a real slow play the ball, and now you'd expect the kicking corn to go on. And Elijah Taylor, a player, like I said, he's an international, a, a former New Zealand international, played in the NRL, played in Super League. And he's a much better player than than that to give a penalty. You'd expect Deck Patton to knock this one over and that put Swinton over eight points to nil. And this game hasn't really got going yet, and they're going to find themselves two scores behind. Yeah, you would think in a game like this, with <coughs> the kicking ability off the tee of Deck Patton, that Swinton will look to just keep that scoreboard ticking over as and when they can. An opportunity to do exactly that here. Pretty routine in the end for the former Warrington man. And Swinton, well, they couldn't have asked for a better start to this game, could they? Eight minutes gone and an eight-point lead. You've got to say, they brought it all on their own, on, on themselves, this Oldham side. They dropped two balls, one off a standard kickoff, and, and, a, and a pretty much end over end there that Moagoro made a meal of two. So, eight points, and I'm sure Sean Long's sending the message on what we need to 
be much more competent at the back, catching the ball and concentrating on, on your skill. Well, he said when we spoke to him pretty much so long that he needed to look out for deck patterns kicking game. Already causing his Oldham side problems as Gavin Bennion carries one off the back fence. He's dropped the ball, though. So a reprieve for Oldham. <coughs> this has been a breathless first nine minutes of a game, Kevin. If it stays like this for 80 minutes, all sorts is going to happen this evening. Well, we was expecting fireworks, and that's exactly what we've had, Lewis. The, the carry was superb, and I mentioned before, Gavin Bennion started this game. He ran so strong, though. But unfortunately, his skill let himself down. He gets through, you know, the first tackling Joe Wardle. And then it's Chaplow who comes in and dislodges the ball. Now a great opportunity for Danny Craven to pull the strings. Well, another reset scrum. Both teams. Looking like they're trying to gain an advantage. Wilde plays it from the base of the scrum. Ellis drops it off. Ben O'Keefe. Ben O'Keefe. Met well and gets a penalty. Just a, one of those that just rode up a little bit. It'll be just the penalty. So Wildy again. We'll get us back underway and play it to Ellis. Ellis brings it up to the line. Elijah Taylor spinning into contact. Brought down 10 metres away under the sticks to come over to the right again. It's a big carry. Swinton defence is on hand to bring down Owen Farmworth. And now they bring it out to the left hand side. They're coming all the way over to the edge. Astley just checks, steps back inside, keeps the ball in hand. Great cover defence there by Lewis Hall. Now they bring it over to the right. Wildy into the halves. He drops it off to Farmworth. Farmworth met well by the Swinton defence. Look out for Lawson. Slower play the ball. Taylor might have just got himself through. Ellis in the end comes well. Brilliant defence. I think that was Lawton on the crash, wasn't it? Will the sniping from dummy half. Has he got himself over? I think he has. The referee's having a look at it. Drop the ball. I think he's saying that he's dropped the ball over the line. So last graft defence for Swinton. And it's a good call. He did drop the ball, but it's a warning sign. You know, the quick play of the ball was by Lawton, and we see on the replay, he shows the dummy, he gets over the line, and it was, it was Mitch Cox who just gets too much pressure on him and makes him force the error over the line. But as you mentioned, a bit of a warning shot from Oldham as Williams brings it up, and then Eves gets on his bike from dummy half, makes some good metres off that quick play of the ball. He'll have a big job to do, only Williams coming in off his wing. Helping his forwards out in yardage. Lewis Hall brings it up just short of halfway. Good controlled ruck from an Oldham perspective, just slowing things down a little bit. And Eves with a short pass to Benyon. Benyon brought down well. Adam Lawton. A bit of... Uh, Interest on deck pattern there from Lawton. It's dropped again by Astley. Where's this going to fall? He picks it up, but we're coming back. It's an offside. So he's, he's dropped the ball, and then his own player has touched the ball in front of him. So it's another penalty for the Swinton team in front of the sticks. Interesting to see what they do here. There's a, a few of those hand motions on there to suggest that they keep going. I think that is what they're going to do on this occasion. So another golden opportunity for Swinton to extend this early lead. And Benyon is brought down 15 metres away from the Oldham line. Dead centre, options left and right. Eves opts to go to the left. Hall met well by the defence. And again, Eves at play the ball. This time it comes out to the right. Gibson to Patton. Patton decides to come back inside, keep it in his hands. Almost jinxes his way through, but in the end, he's brought down by three Oldham defenders. It's a slower play, the ball. Eves goes himself, could be through here. If he can get his arm free, he'll score. But he's held up just for a second, then it looked like he might have done enough. Well, Logan Astley there has redeemed himself for that drop ball because it was looked for all the world that he was going to get that ball down. Josh Eves used an awful amount of strength there, the young product of the Wigan Warriors club. So Hall brings it to the left-hand side to Benyon. 
Benyon already doing a lot of work in the middle for Swinton. He's brought down Eves with a long ball out to Gibson. Gibson stabs a kick through. And I think it's Astley again, mopping up for Oldham. And they survive that period of pressure. Bit of a messy play the ball. Referee just telling him to get on with it. And they do, and it's dropped again. And I think Swinton have scored straight from the knock on. It's Agoro who's dropped it. Swinton pounce. Just trying to see in that pile of bodies who it is. I think it was Mikey Wood. But that's a disaster. The back three at the moment, well, the back five, if you count the, the one from the kickoff, have been an absolute horror start. And they're going to find themselves 12 points down in the Seems only to be 12 14, minutes. 14, you would think. Oh, it's just unforgivable, isn't it? It's a bit of a sloppy pass. It's Jaden Hatton. In the end, who, who managed to scoop the ball up and the easiest of finishes, but we well, won't want to watch that back tonight. Moa Goro. A player that was a little we were both bit high, excited but... to watch before the game. He's had an absolute shocking opening 13 minutes. He got one, you know, off the booter deck pattern that bounced off his chest, and on that occasion, he got a pass from Logan Astley that bounced off his chin. Or well, maybe it's our fault, Kev. <laughs> Talking about before the game. And we've put the knockers on him. It's a big test now for Oldham, you know, to be going away from home in the Challenge Cup. Like you say, it looks like it's going to be 14 points down. And they're going to have to show a lot of character to get back into this game. But if they concede any more, Lewis, it is a, a big a big gap already. They need to be the team that scores next. Well, Deck Patton adds the extra two <coughs> fairly routinely. <laughs> We've only been playing 14 minutes, Kev. Everything has happened in this game. Well, that's just a shocker. That's that's amateur. And these players, you know, the passer and the recipient there, Moagoro, much better than that. And it's important they don't take the divot with them now. They, they forget that. They get on the gate. They get the head clearly into this game. Well, Jamie Ellis goes deep with the kickoff. Taken. And again. I think it's Gavin Benyon just pinning in his back, getting the legs oh! pumping. He looks bang up for it tonight. As Lewis Hall brings it into the middle of the field. And that's a crime, actually, his apologies on the occasion. This is Hall. Just gets himself through a tackle. And those post contact meters are so valuable, aren't they? In terms of getting your team on the front foot. It's a slower play of the ball, but Eves. Gives it to Benyon, putting himself up for work again. I think you'd have to say that the Swinton pack are dominated at the moment. You know, Certainly are at the moment. So yeah. Players in the Oldham side, but at the minute they're on the back foot. No kick from the halfway line, so Patton. I think we know exactly who he's going to target here. He puts it up in the air. This is anyone's ball. It's not been looked after from an Oldham perspective. Comes back to Gibson. Still the last, so the kick goes in again. It's bouncing around all over the place. Now it could be in again here. And the referee's going to pull it back. I think they were lucky again there, Jack Johnson. Dove for the ball. And it looked like Dan Abram was going to score once again, but he's called it back. I think he's the first knock on. He's called from Swinton. It's frantic, isn't it, Kevin? It just, just hasn't settled. Well, every time the ball goes on the foot for, for Swinton, it just looks really awkward the ball just bounced up here and yeah it's horrible spedding. bounce it's spedding who nearly went in <clears throat> but they failed to deal with the kick on the previous tackle they let the ball bounce jordan turner carrying it from the scrum still going eventually brought down it's a wildy at dummy half just drop a short one off. Careful, Josh. Jack Johnson on that occasion coming off his wing to support. Here's a go rope. So making up to do, and he wins a penalty for his team. And that will help. And you could see that the speed at which he carried that ball and the power that he carried that into the line. What he has got. He just needs to clear his head now, doesn't he? After yeah, those he early does. Mistakes. And that'll help. That'll really help. That was just a real strong back to basics, direct carry. It was too big and too strong to deal with, and it's a great call from the referee. Josh Eves slipping above the chin. And this is where they need to put some structured play together and actually challenge the Swinton defence. Well, it was good distance on the kick. 
Ellis. Oh, it's a quick carry Strop always. Strop carries. Farmworth, that's that been stripped. And it's going to be a penalty. Yeah, and that was, that was three of them in there. <laughs> yeah, optimistic to say the least there from Lewis Hall. He saw the one from last night, didn't he? Yeah, it was a little Probably. bit different, though. <laughs> he forgot to tell the other two to stop. So Oldham with another opportunity to try and get themselves a foothold in this game. Ellis brings us out to the right. Lawton should have backed himself for a second, then he was through. Threw a bit of an aimless ball out to a go road and bundled into touch. Well, Adam Lawson, I agree with you there, Lewis. He was through and he's putting his hands on his head. He knows he's bombed a massive opportunity. Six foot seven. When he gets near the line, he normally, you know, backs himself. But on that occasion, we see on the replay, there's oh. no man in front of him, but just run just stop running. <clears throat> and there just doesn't seem to be any kind of composure from an Oldham perspective. Every time that they get the ball at either end of the pitch, it's a, a lot of panic. They look shell-shocked. They, they look like they're, they're a team that didn't expect this. And, Paul Moore Agoro on the wing. When you're going through a bit of a bad patch, the last thing you want is a ball bouncing around your ankles with four Swinton defenders chasing you and throwing you into touch. So Mikey Wood with the carry. Eves brings us over to the left-hand side. Reese Williams comes off his wing. And already for Swinton, it's quite a simple occasion, equation. They just need to, to keep things simple, get through the phases, get through the sets. And put the kick up in the air. And it's working for them. Eves just brings us out to the right. Abraham coming into the line, steps back inside, almost through, and he will get a penalty for the high shot. It's just a, it's a loose, loose arm, isn't it, from Wardle? Just caught between Chapelo and Wardle there. And I think the referee is going to speak to someone on this occasion. There's been a couple that have slipped through the net. It'll be interesting to see if he goes to his pocket for that one. It's Chapel out. Who he's talking to. I think there was mitigation there, Lewis. He's, you know, he's stepping and then he ducked. It is a penalty. It will just be the penalty. I think that's the right decision. But again, discipline, errors. You know, putting pressure under himself as we see the replay. Just ducked underneath. Hopefully Dan Abram can get back onto his feet and he has no effect from that because it did look awkward and he is still down. But he started the game fantastically well. Yeah, a real added threat, isn't he, from fullback coming into the line. We've seen his footwork on a couple of occasions already, scoring that opening try, of course. And they're taking his, their time with him, but he's back on his feet now. It looks like he's going to continue. So a chat with the, the doctor and the referee. Looks more like his neck than his head that he's holding. Yeah, it did, it did just real jolt the neck sideways. Bit of a whiplash type injury. Well, he's going to carry on. In the meantime, Deck Patton will put the ball into touch. And Swinton with an opportunity 20 metres out to continue to build scoreboard pressure on Oldham. It'd be too early to say that a lead would be unassailable, but a 16 or an 18 point gap does feel like a big one in a game like this. Yeah, it does. And the way that Swinton have just been real composed when they get down into the opposition, and the way, again, we see a set restart, the way the ill-disciplined side keeps showing its face for the old and rough yards is, uh, is something that they need to change quickly. Otherwise, this challenge cup tie is going to drift away. So Benyon plays the ball. Eves brings it out. Gibson flicks it back onto the inside to Mikey Wood. Met by the defenders. It was a little bit telegraphed, that plan move. But an opportunity to get Gibson. He brings it out to Patton. Patton dodges a couple of tackles. Still has it. Slips and just has to surrender with the Swinton player in front of him. Yeah, it looked like it was going to open up, but it was Mitch Cox who was just in his way. They come out to the left. Gibson... Dropping it off to Lewis Hall, who's had his hands on everything for Swinton so far in this game. Footwork again. And now they come left. Gibson, Patton. Looked like he thought about the kick, decides to give it. I think Oldham's defence is going to do enough here. Stop them short. But they stay in the field of play, so this is the last. Comes out to Patton. 
puts the little kick through. In the end, Astley's done really well to defuse that. Keep himself over the line, keep Oldham with the ball. Crawl into the ball, uh, saved his team, going even further behind. And now it's really important that Oldham just cut the mistakes out and get, you know, their chance to kick the ball because they have got some terrific kickers in Ellis and Craven. Oh, Goro met well by that Swinton defence. And you would think the big word that will be being said in that Oldham line at the moment is just complete. That's a better carry. Jordan Turner making some metres for his team. Still getting us some attention, but the referee says play on. Craig Kopchak onto that's the field carry. now, and that's a carry of a man fresh on. And just that little bit of experience, perhaps, from Turner and, Turner and Kopchak to get their team on the front foot. And the kick isn't a bad one. Abram deals with it in the end, but it was a bouncing about. And he's met by Ellis and Taylor. And probably the best end to a, a yardage set, set in their own half that Oldham have had all game. Yeah, making them start the set. You know, a much better position for Oldham. And I just thought that the experience there, the experienced players really stood up. Jordan Turner firstly, and then Craig Kopchak really got his team on the front foot. They know they can do it, they just have to settle down and do this for a little bit longer. Get into this battle of an arm wrestle with Swinton. Well, Gavin Benyon taking a much-deserved rest. He's been outstanding in his opening 22 minutes. And it's just an interesting phase now, the interchanges. Will we see the pendulum swing a little bit? Kopjak very strong with his first carry off the bench. And a go-ro will take it in the middle of the field here, and he makes some good contact metres, and just in the last... Few minutes, it feels like all of them are building themselves back into this game. Yeah, they are. Kopchak through direct getting his nose through Lewis. again. Yeah, just keeping it in between the tram lines in those middle channels, and it's working for them at the moment. It's a slow play, the ball. Taylor will take it and drop it off to Ellis. Ellis to Lawton, who got the legs pumping, but the Swinton defence does well. This is the last. They'll go over to the right hand side. The kick will go high into the air. Goro chasing it for Oldham, but the Swinton defence does well. Yeah, it's the fullback, I think. Dan Abram. Dan Abram shaking off that knock that he had a few minutes ago to get under that ball. But again, that's nice play from Oldham just to be get through the set. A patient approach, get behind the kicking game, and now they can back the defence and attack the attack, so to speak. Daniel Spencer Tonks on the field now for Swinton. <laughs> Alan Kilshaw will be so pleased with his side's work in this opening 24, 25 minutes of the game. He's taking a break as well, which means George Roby on the field at nine. Huddersfield Giants product. Real live wire at dummy half. Brings it up to Gibson. Kick goes high, Astley looking to get underneath it again, but he lets it bounce, and it drops into the hands of Lewis. Lewis, all apologies. It's danger. So quick, this game. Abram spins one out to Williams. Williams stabs it through and chases his own kick. And in the end, all of them do well. I think it was maybe Ben O'Keefe on that right-hand side, just shutting that down. It was. Koro fed another hospital ball up by his head. It's play on, that's a great carry. I think he'll um, might be having a word with some of the people that have given him some of this service in this game, Agoro, but not helped him out. He's getting himself back in the game now, and that's that's really going to help things. The tide is starting to turn, and it's not through, you know, fancy play, it's through hard work. It was Danny Craven who pounced on the ball, and now he's going to kick, you know, 30 metres downfield. Yeah, it's really good distance on the kick, and it was Jordan Turner, wasn't it, again, ramping up, and maybe just the, the speed that he was coming in just forced that Swinton line to, to come up a little bit quicker than they should have done. And this feels like a big opportunity for Oldham now. As you say, the tide does feel like it's turning. Kopchak, he's already made a big impact off the bench. Wildy brings it out to the left. Ellis drops it off to Taylor. Taylor stops short in the shadow of the post. Options left and right. While he brings it to the right-hand side, Ellis just looking to step through. 
The door was shut, but Oldham in a very good position, and Lawson from the back fence ramping up. And Swinter's defence does superbly well to keep him out. And while they brought down as well. So this is the last. Oldham bring it out to the right hand side. Ellis. Well, it was brilliant defensive work. It was Logan Ashley who just dropped the ball. It was Jaden Hatton who came flying up to Jamie Ellis. Didn't give him any space at all. He had to pass it pretty much as soon as it got to him. He did, and the key thing there that Reese Williams followed the centre, Jaden Hatton, and put pressure on the opposite on the outside back. And again, another error finishes that set. They've got to make sure now that these play the balls are very slow because George George Roby is the hooker and he's very, very dangerous and lively at the back of the play of the ball. Yeah, and he sniff of a quick play. He'll be on his bag. Swinton will take huge confidence from the way they defended that set. That Adam Lawson carry looked horrible. He came from absolutely miles back. Yeah, and three of them kept him out. Body on the line. Showed a lot of character there. And Jordan Case onto the field. And the ball has hit the deck. And all of a sudden, it's just going Oldham's way, isn't it? Yeah, and if you keep continually putting the ball in the right areas, even though they turned the ball over with a knock on, it was in the right area. It made him come out. He gets his arm free. And Case just can't pick the ball up off his boot laces. And we talk about arm wrestle in these games. It didn't really feel like there was one for the first 15, 20 minutes. It was so kind of frantic and quick. Just feels like it's settling into a rhythm now, and it's Oldham making the best of that. We're going to come back again to reset the scrum. We mentioned after the last try for Swinter that it's really important that Oldham scored the next points, and they've got a fantastic opportunity now with six six tackles in the opposition 20. So Craven brings it up to the line, drops it off to Turner, stepping off his left foot, almost breaking through, but Swinter's defence stands firm again. Craven and acting half. Brings it out to Wildy. Wildy drops that off to Ted Chapel out. And it's going to be a penalty. Again, another above the shoulder tackle. It's a high tackle God gets us back underway. Chapel out again offering himself up with the carry. Just looking to see where Adam Lawton is because this is a very similar position to where he crashed in before. Swinton's goal line defence, as of yet, has been immaculate. But more pressure for them to withstand here. Kopchak brings it up to the line. It's intercepted. And I think the ball's gone to ground, has it? Yeah. It's Gibson who has it in his hands. It's a for Swinton. Fact, crossing. And Oldham just overplaying a little bit on that occasion. Yeah, Craig Kopchak actually caught the ball before he was out the back of Chapel out. It's a good decision from the referee and a relieving penalty that Deck Pan can find touch. So Swinton, they'll just want to settle things down a little bit here. They've got this lead. They've withstood a period of pressure from Oldham. Spencer Tonks with the carry. And the crowd really getting into this game now around us. We're right in the thick of it in this stand. Fantastic atmosphere here tonight. A real special Challenge Cup feel to this game. Local rivals, of course. Plenty of history between them. Swinton at the moment on top. Lewis Hall. Brought down a few oohs and ahs from the crowd, but the referee says get on with it. Roby. Just sniping around the ruck. He's brought down. It's a set restart. So an opportunity for Swinton to really put their camp out in the Oldham territory. Roby brings us left. And a fantastic platform for Swinton. They have got options to the left, which is where they go. Roby brings it in and then just drops it off. And they could be in again here. Oh, good covering defence from Oldham. And Roby again, just trying to slip through that line from the play of the ball, but he stopped right on the goal line. 
Bring it out to the right-hand side is Patton. Patton with a long stretching ball out. Now Abraham coming into the line, brings the step back inside. Could be some space, he's met well. It's better defence from Oldham this time. This is the last. So Gibson will bring it out to Patton. Patton just stabs a little kick through, which took a bit of a deflection. I think the first one went backwards. Then the second time of asking, he's dropped the ball forwards. Just wait to see what the referee gives here, but I think Swinton are going to have another set. Right on the Oldham line. Yeah, and I think that's another good call by the referee. He's dragged the ball back to himself, meaning that that is a forward propelled m movement with the ball. And this is going to be a real difficult challenge now. We've already seen from a scrum in this similar position. The open, the scoring. Well, what an opportunity this is after withstanding that spell of Oldham pressure. Swinton all of a sudden with a golden opportunity to extend their lead. It's a slow play, the ball. Roby just with a short drop off. Oldham's defence standing firm. And again, it's a slow play. Roby will bring it out, it takes a bounce. Gibson couldn't bring it in cleanly. The referee has a decision to make here because of the hands from both teams all over that ball. Yeah, it was a poor pass from George Roby on that occasion. I think this will be an Oldham ball, Oldham scrum down. Just looked like a little bit of indecision, didn't it, on that slow play of the ball. I think yeah. initially he'd wanted to go himself. You can't pick the ball up there if you're not running and you are passing. You've just got to get it off the floor. Joe Wardle has been around a long, long time. Knows what he's doing there, doesn't he? Just that little bit of interest from Wardle to make Roby's job a little bit harder. And it will be Oldham ball on their 10-metre line. Just feels like they've lost a little bit of that momentum they were building. Yeah, they need to liven up, don't they? The senior players, they need to get their hands on the ball as well, the ball players, and start exposing some of these edge defences. So far, we've seen nothing from Turner and O'Keefe and Agoro in, and Jack Johnson in any sort of field position or space. So Wildy on the 20-metre line brings it out to the left-hand side. Craven bringing it up to the line and dropping it off to Wardle. Swinton's defence does well again. Eight metres short of the halfway line. Now they come out to the right. Ellis out to Astley at the back. Now we might be able to see a go-row brought into the game. That's better. Move the ball. Make a, make a decision. Well dealt with on that occasion by Reese Williams. Ellis puts that up on a cherry picker. It's dealt with well by Abram. Oh, the chase is good, though. And they're pushing back. You'd have to say it was a poor kick, but the chase has made up for that and turned it into a great end of set for Oldham. It's a crimes. He's met well again. Kopchak and Turner on this left-hand side have been a useful little uh, duo for them since Kopchak came on. In attack and defence. And he's involved in that tackle again. Forcing Swinton back further. So this is better from an Oldham perspective. Swinton just dealing with it for the time being. Yeah, another good shot. This is a great defensive set for Oldham. It's more like it. Roby. Spencer Tonks. Winding up. Really good carry from him. Well, that's poor from Craig Kopchak. Called a shoulder charge. Well, I've just been singing his praises. But he's let his side down there a little bit. Fourth tackle as well, Lewis. They've done so well. It was Spencer Tonks who just picked him out. And it's a good call again. He has, it's a shoulder charge. Got to wrap your arms. Slays it. Well, he's, um, he's come off holding his own head there, Kopchak, but just his technique let him down a little bit there. He's dipped his bag. It's probably the hardest thing to do. You know, for such a big man, just wrap your arms round and, like you say, he's hurt himself, and that's why the shoulder charge has gone out, because it is a dangerous movement. You don't know how it's going to end. It's a pattern. Puts the ball into touch on the halfway line. And Swinton now, with five minutes or so, Will their mentality just be get to the break with things as they are? Yeah, I think they'll be happy if they do that, but I also think that they'll be thinking, 
look what we've been doing is look very dangerous let's keep doing that till the end and hopefully we can get even more points because they could almost put this challenge cup tie to bed if they could score again the Roby. we mentioned that he'd look to do this when he came on that's probably the fifth or sixth time already that he's scooted from dummy half gibson brings it up to the line he dropped that ball drop off ball to mitch cox which then finds its way to the floor so oldham have possession back and conversely Oldham you know going in at 14 nil I'll be you know desperately disappointed with that score line but there is still five minutes remaining if they can get down the other end of the field I'm sure they will start throwing this ball around and take some chances try and get a little bit more possession down there and some points too so Turner playing the ball after a, a decent carry there's some more metres on offer for Oldham up the middle. That does seem to be where they're having the joy. A Goro, another high pass, takes it in the end, makes his way up to the halfway line. Swim where he wants it, do they? Don't want to make it easy for him today. He's clearly upset a few people on the team bus on the way in or something like that because he's had a few hospital balls. Kopchak plays the ball. Wilde brings it up over to the left-hand side. Craven brings it up to the line where Wardle is met by three Swinton defenders. Shouts for forward from the Holmes fans. Nothing given from the referee or the linesman. Craven will put this one up high. Johnson had a little bit of uh, attention there on his way through. But it was only tackle for Lewis. I'm not sure why you, you know that you can have one more crack at him, and then you can still do that 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 kick on the on the last tackle. I just thought that was panicked. It was rushed, and it probably sums up the for opening. First half for Oldham today. And look, a few times today, it almost looked as if Oldham hadn't set something out. Yeah, just came just out. An afterthought. Well, what is going on here? It's all over the place. Spencer Tonks in the end dives on it. They have dropped the ball. And that's a bit of a disaster. There's a golden opportunity then for Oldham. Three minutes or so left on the half. A chance at last for some points. <laughs> Comedy of <laughs> circus act in the end. The sublime, the ridiculous, and also brilliant, Bakil. <laughs> but the result is an Oldham scrum in the shadow of the Swinton sticks. They bring it out to the left hand side. Jamie Ellis. This could be the one. Danny Craven gets Oldham on the board. A show and go. And in the end, an easy finish for the Oldham halfback. For all of their efforts on the Swinton line in the last 10 minutes, they finally have some reward. Yeah, and a beautiful manufactured play straight out the coaching manual from Sean Long. Just gets Danny Craven out wide. He's on the outside of Mitch Cox and he puts so much pressure on his opposite halfback, Jordan Gibson. Throws the dummy. We get to watch it again. Well worked by halfback to halfback. Mitch Cox can't get there. Gibson goes out. And that's exactly what Oldham needed going into half time. And we just saw it was you know, the disappointing way that they dropped the ball and give Oldham the opportunity. That'll be the thing that really disappoints Alan Kilshaw, the Swinton head coach. And it was a it was a dangerous enough line, wasn't it, from Jordan Turner on his shoulder to just cause a little bit of confusion, a little bit of indecision in the defence. And in the end, Danny Craven, space opened up in front of him, and he's too good a player to turn opportunities like that down. Yeah, he is. See the big halfback now, Jamie Ellis. An opportunity Great kicker to of the ball. Cut that lead down. For half time, he makes no mistake. Straight through the middle, and Oldham will feel like that is a very important score for them as we head to the break. You just feel the difference that that's made, not only to the game but to the crowd as well. Just have a look at it again. It's really nicely worked. So much noise, like you mentioned, out wide. Jordan Turner, Logan Astley out the back of Turner. He had eyes for them. He's got a great show and go. Head and shoulders. A player I played with, Danny Craven, at the Witness Vikings. He was always very good at that. Always testing in training. Quite a few of your former teammates on the field today. Yeah, especially for the Oldham team. I think there's about 13 I've played with, so... Yeah, and all the talent that they've got in the ranks. We're back underway, Chapel out. Bringing it off his own line. <coughs> Oldham with their tails up after that score. Good carry from Turner. Still pumping the legs, eventually brought down. He's got better and better as the half progressed. 
had a, an, about as bad a start to the game as you could get, but he has grown into this, and there is the hooter. And a really entertaining first 40 minutes of Betfred Challenge Cup action here at Haywood Road. Swinton racing out to that early lead, but Oldham, as time's gone on, has just got themselves a foothold, and that Danny Craven try just before the break sees them get some points on the board. And it's beautifully set up, isn't it, Kev? It is, and they've just given themselves a bit of a lifeline there, and I think it might have changed Sean Long's team talk from... Still may rip the paint off the walls with some of the stuff he says because it's just not good enough for some of these players. Like you mentioned, just straight from the kickoff, that set the tone, dropping the ball, deck pattern, putting it on a string, you know, for Dan Abram. Yeah, it started off in the best possible fashion from a Swinton perspective, a, a disaster for Oldham. Jordan Turner spilling the kickoff. And then from the resulting scrum, deck pattern brings it into the line. Abraham spots the indecision from a go rope. Four points, Kev. Yeah, and that, that was just too easy, wasn't it? And we said, what you don't see here is that they'd already had the, the dress rehearsal for that play because the referee had brought the scrum back. And it's a well-worked play, but if the winger had the time again, he'd want to come in. And if the winger had the time again, hour. he'd want to catch the ball and get a better pass. There's not really much to analyse in that try, is it? No, he'll <laughs> not want makes a mistake. That'll be a howler in the video review when they do analyse that, because that is criminal. You saw how hard the Oldham have just had to work for their try and how easy that is. Jaden Hansen will finish off some impressive tries in his career. That was of the easier variety. And then this, just before half-time, Oldham desperately needed some points on the board before the break. And in the end, Danny Craven does really well off this plan move. Yeah, it's a real smart play. They hold the ball in the scrum. They double up on Jordan Gibson. He gets outside of Mitch Cox because of the looping. Jamie Ellis comes round to just provide that extra pass. And like we've just previously said, that gives them a lifeline. It gives them something to talk about. They know what they can do and what they can do with the ball in hand. It's probably what they've done when they've not had the ball defensively, what they really need to work on and defending their own line much, much better. You can accuse me of pointing out the obvious here, but the first try in the second half is going to be crucial, isn't it? Which way it goes. A thoroughly entertaining first 40 minutes here at Haywood Road in this Betfred Challenge Cup tie. Swinton lead 14-6 to six at the break. We're just going to leave you with a taste of what we've got available and coming up here on The Sportsman. You're watching the Sportsman Rugby League. Subscribe for weekly shows, exclusive content and live games. Even if you are part of a rugby family this city, which would be shock if you want, but even if you want, you'd you'd have extended family or friends who are, and you see how much it means, so much to live and breathe it, and it means so much to them rugby in this city, and also over so many years how getting one over on each other means to them, and how it affects their yeah. life. You're one or the other. Um, everyone's a black and white or a red and white. Even if you don't follow the scores every week, you've got an affiliation one sense or the other. There's nothing. I've come across like traveling around the world and living in different cities that is quite like Hull v Rovers. It's a very working class city, it's a hard city, you know, there's not a lot of prosper going on here. So 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 people look to the rugby league team, they look to sport to to be the catalyst to, to happiness really. The thing of working in a factory or in a shop or, you know, that that working class, you know, just go out and 
earn your living because on a Sunday you want to go and watch a team or on a Friday night as it is these days. Even though we have all City, like, what are doing well and they're a big team and stuff like that, you know, credit to them, but to me, I think Hull's a rugby, a rugby town. Yeah, definitely a rugby town. It's, you just go through the amateurs, you go through West Hull, Scala, you've got a lot of you've got a lot of players what have come from them teams, what have represented Hull and Rovers. So he's passionate, he's yeah. a big passionate city. Yeah. But he's the only true I think true derby in rugby league because there's no other in Super League, especially there's two clubs from the same city. There ain't not, none of that, I don't think, Leeds, Bradford, St Helens, Wigan. They're all separate places. Ulham Rovers is the main proper derby. So about seven, seven days ago, um, everybody's starting to talk about it. You're hearing it on the radio, um, on the television, and then, you know, you wake up this morning, you think this is it, this is derby day, let's go. They won't be singing like this later. surreal and um, probably one I think one of the reasons why we won today is because we only got allocated 4,000 and we said that we could have filled it maybe two and a half times that you know and I really felt that was a driving force this week is that why they're not allocated is even more is because obviously the fear fear our fans and the loud noise that they make and stuff like that and it don't matter if there's one or eight thousand they make that much noise it's absolutely fantastic for us players. You're watching the Sports from Rugby League Subscribe for weekly shows, exclusive content and live games. to look forward to on the Sportsman this year. The last tackle is back every Wednesday at 6 o'clock and we've got that feature from the whole derby available as well. Plenty more on the way, but right now here at Haywood Road we've got an absolute cracker of a cup tie. Swinton 14, Alden 6 at the break and a, a breathless first 40 minutes, Kevin Brown. Yeah, breathless and it started with a kick-off. You know, just completely out of, you know, well, the perfect copybook, really, for Swinton. Get the kick off, get the ball back, put the ball in the scrum and score a try. You couldn't have expected a better start. And then if you want something else, it's it's a try on a plate, like we saw it hit Mo Moagoro in the face. So they've worked really hard, but they have been gifted a couple of tries there, Swinton, I feel. And Oldham have done it the hard way. They've clawed themselves back. They've shown an awful lot of character to get themselves back in this game. But you do have to think that the the ball was turned over pretty sloppily for them well, to score their opening try. Here's how it all started. An error from Jordan Turner. Swinton didn't need much more of an invitation than that. Dan Abram just sliding his way through. Perfect start. As a player, you just must love it when you get off to a start like Yeah, that. And, and as a player, when you start the game, you want your first involvement to be a real positive one. And for Jordan Turner, it wasn't. But for Deck Patton and Dan Abram, it was. The first touch is a try and a try assist. And then the next best thing is this. When you're playing at marker and you're thinking you're going to have to do a tackle like Jordan Atten was, and the ball bounces up and you fall over the line for four points, you mentioned it, he'll score a few good tries. But you take them all, and when you get one on a plate like that, it's almost um, wrapped in paper as well, and it's a birthday present. And then this one, which sets us out perfectly for this second half, Danny Craven. I say it's a show and go. It's a show, a show, and then a go. <laughs> just to cut through. Jordan Turner holding his line really well, just to give the defence something extra to think about. And a really important try in the context of this game. And as we mentioned just before the break, 
the next try feels hugely important. Yeah, and I like what Danny Craven did there. We'd seen a few times that he double pumps and found Joe Wardle on his hip. And on that occasion, he just throws the dummy. I think, you know, Sean Long will be telling his halfback to run the ball because when Danny Craven does run the ball, that's when he plays well. And you're exactly right, in the context of the game, it was so important that Oldham scored next. And the fact that they scored before the half-time break, you can hear these Oldham fans now getting right amongst it. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the have, middle of them. It's a big group of Oldham fans that have moved right next to our commentary position. Me and Kev essentially in the away end at this point, so we'll do our best to hear ourselves think and talk. Bring you this second half. There we go, we're right in the middle of that somewhere. Fantastic atmosphere here. I think we're the only ones who haven't got a pint as well, Lewis. Beer flowing. <laughs> if anyone wants to bring me a brew or hand warmers <laughs> or anything of that kind of description, it'd be very welcome. As Swinton come back onto the field. Reese Williams there. Didn't have a huge amount to do close to the Oldham line, but some very important involvements. Yeah, and a lot of Getting pressure the opposite, didn't it? And defensively excellent, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Moagoro coming out, the opposite winger. You know, he did lots of good stuff in, the, in that opening half, but he also made a couple of errors that he'll be trying to make up for now in this second period. I would say as well, to be fair to him, he did have to deal with a few less than desirable passes okay. somewhere up around his head. Yeah, give me half a chance, lads. So we're almost ready to go again. Huge 40 minutes of Betfred Challenge Cup action on the way. Sheffield Eagles await the winners of this game. It'll be a home tie for whoever wins this one. So that is the prize. And we've got 40 minutes to settle it as Ellis gets us back underway. So Swinton attacking from right to left, as you see it on your screen. Bit of a calmer start. Yeah, so much second better half. start. <laughs> Crimes comes in off his wing to make a carry. Roby starting the second half as he finished the first. And immediately, Swinton looking out to play to the edge. Reese Williams just stepping back inside, chugging off a couple of defenders. That's definitely some of the spoke about, isn't it? We didn't see much of that in the first half. And again, some good after contact meters. Bit of a messy ruck, but the referee just lets them get on with it, sort it out themselves. Roby drops it off to Spencer Tonks. He's brought down just short of the 40. This is the last. So they come out to Patton. Patton just with a little chip kick over the top for Astley to deal with. Bounces a couple of times, but now he brings it in. The chase is good from Swinton. Yeah, I think it's Deck Patton who gets his left shoulder in there on Logan Astley. Beautiful bit of def defensive play display by the strong carry from Agoro. Met well by Lewis Hall. Good contact from both players. Swinton looking to pen Oldham in. Oldham already making some decent progress in yardage, just keeping it in the tram lines for the time being. Is Jordan Turner carrying from deep. And he'll get a penalty as well, just an extra effort, I think, in the ruck. I think that's probably the fourth penalty that Jordan Turner's won just by running direct and hard. So an opportunity for Danny Craven to put the ball into touch and give his side a good platform to work from. Turner taps it, gives it to Ellis. Ellis to Kopchak on the charge. Kopchak brought down after probably a seven or eight metre gain. Wildy from Dummy Half back to Ellis. Ellis just dropping that off to Pat Moran. Moran, of course, part of this Oldham team last year that fell short in the League One playoffs. Ellis, another one of those players, dropping it off to the right. So Wilde play the ball. Kopchak again on the run, and he could be through here. Roby in the end, just doing enough to get his shoulder in alongside Jordan Case. But a golden opportunity for Oldham to get the first points of the half. Ellis dropping it off to Lawton. Swins his defense tackle. as well again. Obviously done their homework on Norton. Spent some time here on Jewel Reg. Kopchak looking to crash over, but he's held up. 
Real good defence there. A couple of occasions, firstly on Lawton, then they got to back that up against Craig Kopchak. And one thing that has happened in this second half, I think the Oldham fans have recruited more people to sing right next to us, Lewis. I don't know if you can hear us. I can't really hear us at this point, Kev. But Swinton bringing the ball off their own line. Messi Ruck here, the referee's just going to go over and talk to some of the players involved. I don't think there's any decision coming, I think he's just going to tell them to get on with it. But you can feel that the, the tension has just gone up a notch, isn't it? The it second has. half, the atmosphere's gone up a notch. Yeah, I think it was Pat Moran. Proper cup tie in our hands. Grimes with the carry. And Swinton just slowing it down a little bit. It almost feels intentional. Williams now off his edge. Just need to get the control back from a Swinton perspective. That's a Pass great a kick. kick early in the set, but it's a good kick. It's a very good kick. I'm not sure it's quite a 40 20, is it? But it's a, he's done well to, to turn them around. Oldham starting from inside their own half. Just using all of that experience that he's got, that kicking ability, deck pattern. He had an impressive first half with the boot. I thought he was impressive across the board, but Sean Long identified it as something they need to be careful about. Yep, and he pulled the, game he and pulled and the strings, didn't he? he? Pulled the strings and he sensed that his Swinton teammates were getting penned back and Moa Goro was caught out of position. It was a fantastic relieving kick from Patton. Wow, it's a cop chat. Cop chat brings it up over halfway. Another strong carry from him. He's had a real impact since coming off the bench midway through the first half. Wildy brings us out to the right. Ellis, Lawton again on the crash. Roby's done great, really exactly. well. This is a huge size mismatch between those two. But excellent from Roby to stand firm. Ted Chapel out. Bring it up to the 20 meter line. We go to the short side. Craven puts a high one up. I think it's Abram underneath it. Does really well in the end just to step his way out of trouble. Probably a touch too far, wasn't it, for his chase to real contest for that ball. Which there is a set started in a great area. There is a wind blowing around this stadium, which I'm sure is making both the kicking and dealing with the kicking. Slightly more difficult. Swinson just keeping it simple at the moment, keeping the ball in hand up the middle. Jaden Atten has been impressive tonight. I thought he's carried the ball extremely well every time he's been asked to do so. And that's Grimes, <coughs> who's getting himself more and more into this game, being asked to do a lot more work off that edge. Patton again, and in the end, the kick pressure from Lawton's really good, and it's forced the error from Deck, Deck Patton. Probably the first block in his copybook all night. And Oldham will get the ball, start off with the set, start the set off inside Swinton's half. Yeah, and that was just great effort from Lawton, just flicking at the ankle as he drops the ball. And now it's turned him for an error to a penalty. Deck Patton. A little bit of afters, so an opportunity for Oldham to turn this good field position into a great one. Craven puts it into touch. In the opening four or five minutes of this second half, it is Oldham who have definitely been on top as they look to cut this lead down further. A good opportunity to do that here. Ellis drops it off. Strong carry, but the defence is good. wildy has got options to his left and his right. Half backs are both stacked to the left, which suggests that's where they go and they do. Ellis. He drops it off to Pat Moran. Moran in the end wrestled down. Ten metres short. Wildy comes right to Ellis. Ellis out the back to Craven back inside. And Lawton has been a few times, but it looks like he's been through this afternoon. And the Swinton defence has cut him down. 
Wildy having a look from dummy half. He gives it to Kopchak. Kopchak can't quite spin three. Swinson's goal line defence has been superb so far, but it's under challenge here. Beautiful. And it could be in on the left hand side. And the flag goes up. Brilliant covering defence in the end from the Lions and Oldham are denied. It was spending on Jack Johnson. Just couldn't get the ball down on the ground to score the try. It was a well manufactured move. It was Wilder. And then a tunnel ball from Ellis. And great hands from Jordan Turner. Beautiful defence by Jake Spedding. Swinton's goal line defence this afternoon has been absolutely superb, hasn't it, so far? It has, and especially on Lawton. We've seen how many tries he's scored at this level. You know, when he's so dangerous and they've manufactured some one on ones with him, but as we've seen all night, they've been brave, they've been tough, and they've tackled him every single time. Got Jack and Taylor up in defence there for Oldham, <laughs> craving in that tackle as well. And it's a slow play of the ball, just frustrating Swinton a little bit. And it is perhaps just that control of the ruck, that ruck speed that's helped Oldham turn the tide of this game. Yeah, and Deck Patton just looking again, I think he's after the kick. Oh, Roby almost through. <laughs> Had his nose through the line, but just brought down. And that's Spencer Tonks. Cut short, five metres short of the halfway line. This is the last, so it will come out to Patton. Puts one high up in the air. Goro under some pressure underneath it, deals with it in the end. Williams there to wrap him up. That's the ironic thing. That was a that was probably the most difficult catch he's been tasked with all night, and he made it look easy. <coughs> well, it brings it out to the left hand side. Josh Johnson on first of the Kevin. field. Another one of your old teammates, Kev. Yeah, real good front row. Oh. Well, I've just put the mockers on him there. The curse, the commentator's curse. <clears throat> and Swinton's first real field possession of the second half. Yeah, and as he gets up here, I think he's actually got too much sticky spray on his hands. You see how it sticks to his hand, <laughs> the ball. A wry look on his face. As he picks that one up, he's trying to get it off now. Yeah, too much, Josh. So strong for Swinton. Got 35 metres out. They're going to take it dead central. Dead pattern. Chatter to the ref. Every pattern he feeds the scrum. Roby brings it out to the right hand side. Spencer Tonks. Roby again at acting half. It's a slower play of the ball, so the scoot isn't on. He brings it over to the left. Gibson to Patton. Patton keeps it in hand. Abraham now around the back. An opportunity perhaps for Williams, but it's going to be brought back for an Oldham penalty. And it was. It was crossing. crossing. It He's was. got that spot on. I think the referees had a terrific game. We've had I'm just going to say exactly the same thing. Cameron Wesley's been back. really impressive. <coughs> In the first 50 minutes of this game. Yeah, and it was Deck Patton who passed the ball and Abram, he it's runs around the back. There, yeah, there it? is. Good call. And that's the interesting thing with that is that that kind of just a little bit of lack of composure there from Swinton is the kind of thing that Oldham were doing in the first half, and it was yeah. Swinton who looked in control. Well, giving a penalty away is bad. We're giving a penalty away when you're attacking with the ball is much worse. To Lawton. Great Another power. strong carry. The defence is up to him. They've clearly singled him out in their analysis. They've almost man marked him in this game so far. He is just starting to have a bit of joy. Here's Johnson. His second involvement rides a high shot, gets a penalty for it. And the old adage penalty, penalty try. We'll see if that comes true. But Oldham definitely on top in this phase of the game. Craven puts the ball into touch. Holden will start this around 20 metres out. Ellis dropping it off on the inside to Johnson. Plenty of involvement early on into his spell. Wildy at acting half. 
brings it over to the left. Ellis dropping it back on the inside for Ted Chapelhout. He's cut down 12, 13 metres away from the Swinton line. Wildy again opts to come to the left. Craven, show, go. Jordan Turner coming onto the ball at speed. He's brought down three or four metres away. Oldham looking to turn the screw, reduce this deficit. It was at its feet a little bit, but if Pat Moran could be in here, he's just been held up. Did well. It was a low pass. He did well to gather it up and continue carrying at pace. Swinton's defence doing enough to stop him. In fact, we're going to go back 10 metres because he was over the line. It was held up. So Moran plays the ball. Wildy with a raking pass out to Ellis. Ashley drops it off to Lawton. It takes a couple of attempts. Four defenders in there trying to bring him down. Eventually they do. It's a slow rock and it's a penalty. Penalty, penalty, penalty try it could be now and the discipline. I'm sure this will be the final warning before someone goes and sits down in the bin. I think that's pretty much exactly what the referee has just said to Swinton. Oldham, you just feel like they've got to make this count if they're going to continue to build their way back into this game on the scoreboard. There's no doubt that they've been on top since half-time, but at some point they're going to have to convert that into points. Dead centre, Wildy comes to the left. Ellis brings it up to the line. Moran through again. And again, Swinton's defence just doing enough. Great footwork by the big front rower, Pat Moran. And the referee has blown his whistle again. I think it's another penalty for offside, perhaps, on this occasion. So that's four consecutive penalties now as Chapel out crashes forward just short. Oldham fans behind us thought he'd done enough, but not quite. Wildy and Johnston spinning round, and again the Swinton defence does enough. Now Ellis keeping it in hand on that occasion, maybe not the right decision. There was some space and some numbers over on the right. Swinton's goal line defence holding firm again. Now they come out. Long ball out left to Chapel Howe. He's brought down underneath the sticks. They've split the halfbacks. They come out to the left. It's Craven. And it's a short ball that doesn't work. And Swinton survive. And that feels like a big moment in this game, Kevin. Four consecutive penalties. No points for Oldham. And it looks like they're just trying to go through them rather than trying to use the brains and use a bit more, you know, a skill. It's all brute force. And again, he's trying to thread the needle here. Grimes. And Elijah Taylor can't get away from that. Bring it into the line. Swinson weathering a storm at the moment. We've got the ball in hand, and that's a good carry from Reese Williams, Welsh international. As we mentioned earlier, some real pedigree in this competition. Roby scoots from dummy half. Gets himself a penalty and a real pressure reliever that for Swinton. Yeah, it was. And it's Swinton's turn now to get a relieving kick to touch. And it's got even worse for Oldham, I think. Elijah Taylor's got a pull in his hamstring just in front of us. Yeah, just hobbling off there. Jay Chapel out on his place. And the interesting to, is his, yeah, it is his, the back of his leg is his hamstring that he's holding. I wouldn't imagine we'll see any more of him this afternoon, looking at the way he just came off. But as you said, Kev, a big loss from an Oldham perspective. Yeah, big loss. And I think they've already actually lost Joe Wardle, who was out there in the back row in the first place. So a lot of experience missing. George Roby back up on his feet. I think he's going to stay on the field for the time being. Both teams just taking a breather. It's been 100 miles an hour this game. Feels like the ball has been in play pretty much constantly. Yeah, and that's one thing I think will you know, be a factor at the end of this game, the amount of work that Swinton have just done. Four sets on the bounce, awful lot of energy. And when you think <laughs> about when Swin where Swinton points came from. They weren't from spells of pressure, were they? No. Oldham didn't do a lot of defending for the points that they conceded because of the errors that they came off. So maybe that may just almost play into Oldham's favour in some respects. So Mikey Wood brought down Swinson's first real look at the Oldham try line in the second half. They come out to the left-hand side. And 
Roby. Benyon back onto the field. He plays the ball. Roby picks it up, brings it out to Patton. Patton now to Gibson. Could be some numbers on this right hand side. Abram keeps it in hand, steps through, almost away, still going. Now drops the ball inside. Oldham's defence does well. Penalty. It's a high tackle. Jordan Turner on Dan Abram. Referee's gone back for that. It's really ebbed and flowed and swung one way and then the other, hasn't it? This game, fascinating cup tie here in the Sportsman. Yeah. Brilliant to have you with us. Hope you're enjoying what has been a thoroughly entertaining 54 minutes of rugby league so far. Looks so dangerous, Dan Abram, when he gets out wide. I think that's what Oldham need to do. Use Logan Astley in them positions. Great little player. Give him a bit of space. So Swinton having absorbed all of that pressure. Now have an opportunity to deliver the sucker punch and <coughs> extend their lead, and it's dropped off to Hall. Stop short. Right on that Oldham line. We've got numbers over to this left-hand side. Patton brings it back in. Gavin Rodden stops short. Roby brings us out to the right-hand side. Patton again drops it off to Hall. Not a huge amount on for Hall there, so he just takes the tackle underneath the sticks. Still got a couple in the bag here, Swinton. What can they do with them? Roby brings us left. It's a short ball. He's almost through. This is the last. Where's Deck Patton? He's coming over to the left-hand side. It's a very, very slow play the ball. In the end, Roby goes himself, stabs it through, and Hall's got down. Now, they're going to have a chat about this, but Swinton could well be in from Lewis Hall. The kick came through from Roby. It took a deflection. Hall was the first one to react, and the try is given. And after all of that old and pressure, Swinton get the first points of the second half. Yeah, and it's off another kick not dealt with by the Oldham Ruffheads. George Roby just gets out, opens up the line. I think it did take a deflection, but a man who's been fabulous all night, Lewis Hall. He does really well to react to that. <coughs> and I think, I wonder if the Oldham defence, like me, were looking at deck pattern, expecting the kick to come from him. Roby yeah, did it himself. So. That man wasn't. And he does really well, Lewis Hall. Yeah, and that's the line. We can see two lines there, but there's a rugby union line that he's... You know, he's the furthest one away. He gets it down just in the nick of time. Crucial score. Well, that feels like a very big moment in this game, extending the lead out. 20 points to six in Swinton's favour. And you talk about confidence boosters, that will be a, a real confidence drainer from an older perspective because they've been completely on top since half-time. Yeah, it will, but I also believe that this might kick-start Oldham into taking a few more risks. Their attack tonight has been pretty poor. Quite surprising, because whenever I've seen a Sean Long coach side, you know, they do take risks. So Alex with the short kick-off already. I think Jordan Turner's brought that in. So Oldham do have the ball back. And they need to start being clinical with these opportunities that they're getting. So they come over to the right. 30 metres of real estate to cover between them and the Swinton try line. Wildy brings us over to the right hand side. Ellis brings it up to the line. Craven just about gets the ball away to Lawton. He's cut down. Deck Patton's dealt with Lawton all night fantastically well defensively. An opportunity for Oldham over now on this left hand side. Can they hit back instantly, get themselves back into this game again? Doing it tough tonight as Wildy drops it off to the left hand side. They could be in here. I think Swinson's defence has held them up again. It looked like he was going to get that one that? down. It was Abram. Great defensive display by the fullback there. The goal line defence from Swinton all night has been absolutely superb. They've been under the cosh at times, and by and large they've dealt with it, but there could be a try here. Goro now looking Beautiful. to get himself into space, but Reese Williams deals with it brilliantly. He gets the support. Swinton forced him into touch. Well, it just isn't players. happening, is it, on the edges for Oldham? Reese Williams, and it's his centre partner, Jaden Atten. Beautifully, the trust there from Williams, and then the support from Hatton to throw a goal, who's a really, really strong 
winger for the but Oldham team gets forced into touch the, once again. The, the ball from Ben O'Keefe, it's kind of neither here nor there, is it? He, he even needs to go earlier or later with it to give <laughs> yeah. a go of some chance. It was kind of just a just get it through the hands, get it away, and, and hope that he can do something. And the man on defense. the ball now, Rhys Williams, I think he was hoping that the pass came in. If he had a thrown a dummy there, Ben O'Keefe, I think he could have been going in for a try on his own. So Crimes comes off his edge with the carry. Very simple equation if you're Swinton now. Just complete, get through your sets, kick well, and defend as well as they have done all evening. You can just sense that that try has just taken something out of Oldham, not just on the field, but their supporters behind us as well. So Abram. Now to Patton. Patton gets a kick in, and again he's turned to go around. Takes a bounce. Astley will pick it up and bring it up to the line. And he's met by Hatton and Williams. Yeah, good kick. Nice Ellis chase. Ellis acting half. Big contacts coming in. Well, Oldham have just lost all sorts of shape now. Just carrying, the, looking for the wingers to get them fall, but they need. You know, we're 14 points behind, we've only 20 minutes remaining. They need to get some shape and start moving the ball. What a good carry from Jack Johnson and then Jordan Turner carrying from deep as he has done on a number of occasions tonight. He gets the offload away. Oldham just getting a roll on. Chapel Howe brought down. Still a couple of tackles in their pocket. So an opportunity to make something happen here. Wildy drops it off to the left. Ellis. Oh, and it just overplaying again Turner on this occasion with the the, the one-time pass yeah, it was it never was really on was it no the execution or their ambition and the execution just didn't align it's not far off but Jack Johnson didn't really have much chance of catching that ball but that's what we expect now they are going to have to take more risks and sometimes it pays off but sometimes it makes things even worse Swinton get us back underway. We've been looking over to our right-hand side for much of the second half. That's where a lot of the players have been, but it is Swinton who have the only points of the second period so far. Roby. It's a great oh, away spell. here. Spedding's through. He needs some support. It is coming, but he's going to go himself. He's going to go all the way. What a try this is going to be. From nowhere, Jake Spedding goes length of the field. That could be the ball game, and if it is, what a way to seal it. Well, it's definitely the try of the game. He comes on a short lead, and it's off the uh, hands of Jordan Gibson, and he just hits the centre. Jake Spedding. And it was beautiful composure. But it's actually the wingman who finds Spedding. It's and Turner like, who jams in, isn't it? I like the way he slows up, and then he just packs himself and goes round Logan Astley. Beautiful play. Great speed. And for me, I think that could be their name in the hat in the next round of the Challenge Cup. And what a try to make that happen. Oldham's left edge just shot up, jammed in a bit. A really well-timed pass. And then he just hit the afterburners. And then he found the afterburners again. He did. Super talent, super try. Logan Astley left for dead. That's what you want from your centre when he do when they do get him, you know, a position like that. He had no support. He backs himself. Deck Patton adds the two. And when previous Swinson tries in this match have just come from errors, that was pure speed and athleticism from Spedding. Jordan Turner just shoots up, isn't it? Yeah, and creates Jack, the gap. And Jack Johnson's got to follow him, hasn't he? If he it's great play, great vision that just to slow it up. Well, he's been out on that field for an hour. It looks like his first carry of the game. So fresh. So back underway. A long way back for Oldham now in this game. Just guilty of overplaying at times when they've been on top. Errors at key moments. That's been the difference. They've been very good in large parts of this game, Oldham, but at key moments, they've just let themselves down. 
Yeah, they have it now. Alan Kilshaw sent on ball fuckers at the same time and they're doubling up the runs. We saw Reeves go. Now Reeves is going again. We saw George Roby have a, a run in between that. Really testing the middle out now of Oldham. So it comes out to Patton. Put snow on this one. Absolutely the go row. Weren't really sure who wanted it. This could drop for Williams. Agoro in the end yeah. just knocks it into touch. That That's going to be no, another Swinton opportunity. And he's not really looked comfortable under those high balls all night, has he? No, he hasn't. He hasn't. He, he looks a worry when you let the ball bounce, but then this was even worse. It looked like he clapped his hands and it hits him in the face. Well, the, the thing that will be killing Sean Long, two occasions in quick succession. Turner and his winger not talking to each other. Turner and Johnson being out of sync that led to that breakaway try. And then Astley and Nagoro there didn't look like either of them wanted it. No. You can trace it back to the opening involvement of the game. Turner dropping the ball. When your senior players are doing that. So Roby brings us out to the right-hand side. <clears throat> Swinton looking for the try that really would be the nail in the coffin for Oldham. They've had a wonderful start to life under Sean Long. But they've not found that form tonight. No doubt, better days are ahead for Oldham with the work going on at that club. But at the moment, tonight has all been about Swinton. Roby from the base of the ruck brings us out to the left-hand side. It could be in again here. Really well defended. I think it was Lawton that just pulled the lasso around the feet. But Roby trying to dive his way through. And he's going to get a penalty. I think they've run the ball. They are saying two, but at 26 points to six, I think I'd be rolling the, rolling well, the dice and trying Patton to... Patton wants to go again. Kicking tee looks like it's coming on. Yeah, we're going to take the two. We'll take it's another minute. Ball ticking over. You would think this would be a very routine for Deck Patton. The way that he's kicked tonight. Just an opportunity for Swinton to slow it all down. All they need to do at this point. Deck Patton's kicking game tonight has caused all sorts of problems for, well, Moagoro Mo in particular. And it's been very targeted, isn't it? They've obviously done the work, Swinton, on working out where they can get at this Oldham side. And that's what good players do, especially when it's not going well. You know, they go back there time and time again, they know the confidence is down. He could clearly see on that occasion that he let the ball bounce. And the two points do go over. Josh Johnson coming off. They haven't got a huge amount of bench left to rotate, have they, Oldham? No. The twins are on together and they've just thrown in Tony Farmworth. Three players who played a long time at Witness together. Well, despite the scoreline, Oldham fans to our left, still in excellent voice. It's hugely exciting time for them as a club and what this season holds. But a long way back for the Roffiets. Time ever ebbing away. Roby brings us out to the left-hand side. Williams, another good carry. He's just he's it's been, been really busy, hasn't tonight, it? Hasn't been he? Been really busy in this second half. Every time he's carried the ball, he's looked dangerous. As is this man from dummy half, George Roby. He's really added a lot when he's come off the bench. A real point of difference off the bench, isn't it? Two very different styles of hooker, both on the field. Here's the other one, Eves. There's Benyon. Another player who, when he's been on the field, has made himself very busy. For the Lions, Eves. The kick comes over the top from Gibson. Just dropped short in front of Astley, who has to deal with it, and he's bouncing around. It's gone backwards, says the referee, so the getaway with on there through his legs. Once again, very shaky on the kick receptions. I think Sean Long will be testing out this back three in training. Got to be better than that.
the go rope. Just trying to get himself through. He's not really had any space at all, has he, this afternoon? He's not. Clearly another player they've done their homework on. I think a lot of credit as Oldham get a penalty. I think a lot of credit has to go to Alan Kilshaw, the Swinton coach, because you can see throughout this game things that they've identified, things that they've targeted, and they've got them right. Yeah, and I think defensively more than anything, how tough they've been and how much resilience and character they've shown, especially when they're defending their own line. Time and time again turning up for each other. They've looked really safe. So Pat Moran, who's done well when he's been on, nearly forced himself over a couple of times in the early stages of this second half. Jay Chapel out. Stopped under the sticks. Wildly brings us over to the left hand side. Craven just with a short drop off ball to Moran. Moran dealt with again. Now we come over to the right hand side. Could be in here. Swinton's defence time and time again. A number of times tonight you think they've been in, they haven't been. They could be here though. And they are. Hold them on the board. There's a little bit of afters as well. Yeah, it's the old teammate, it's Josh Eames and Chapel. Ted Chapel, the try scorer. Real simple bit of play. Just rolled out. It was a ball off the hook of Matty Wilder. Just rolls out of the defensive tackle. Scores the try. It's just that spin away from Eames. Probably too little, too late. This kick should make a 16-point game with 10 minutes left. But Oldham with their first points of the second half. Ellis makes no mistake with the conversion. So 28-12, 10 minutes or so left on the clock. Probably worth pointing out at this point. That clock on your screen is just the guide. It's not linked up to the official timekeeper's clock. So we see that try from Ted Chapelow again. In the end, after all the huffing and puffing, that was reasonably easy from an Oldham perspective. But plenty of times tonight, it's been far from easy. Yeah, and what you would probably have to say is the difference between the sides is the, the clinical nature with the ball. I think Swinton, you know, just on a couple of occasions, I think Ted well, Chapel has been sent to the Simbin for a push. There was a bit of afters after that. Not seen that happen many times before. A player score a try and get Simbin in the same act. I'm not sure it was Ted Chapel out. You know, on the replay that we saw, it looked like Owen Farmworth had come in and done the push. But there wasn't much in it at all, and that's not going to help things in this last 10 minutes. So Alden will finish this game, and man short. And still with it all to do. It'd be good if they could go course to course now and back up on that effort, but they're going to have to start moving the ball and doing it quickly. And this is when those extra two points that Swinton have knocked on with the penalties just, just make a difference as Wildy gets some space up the middle. Oldham haven't given up on this game yet. Still some feeling in this. If they could score off this set, maybe the door would just be ajar. They've got a long way to go. Turner comes back on the inside, spins the ball out to Ellis. Ellis now brings it out to Lawton. Good defence again. Ben O'Keefe just looking to step away, but the defence is good. A go row from acting half. He spins it out to Ellis. Ellis will stab a kick through. Abrams there underneath the sticks. It's great defence. I think they're going to possibly force the goal line drop out here, Oldham. But that's probably the best set in the second half for Oldham. They've got 100 metres after points. Great kick at the end. And if they could score here, Lewis, this game isn't over. It's probably their best end to a set without scoring all game. It's the first repeat set I can think of in this Yeah, game. I agree. They're just playing faster now. Desperation. This is what they needed a little bit earlier in the contest. Pat puts his boot through it. It's okay. a monster of a dropout. It's all them through Chapel out. Bring it back up to the 40. Huge chop out from the deck pattern. Been excellent tonight, Patton. He has. As a number of strings. Swinton players have. But Oldham 
banging on the door again. They desperately need to make something happen here. Ellis, Chapel House pins away. And the ball's come loose. Swinton mop it up. Yeah, it was Rawdon who just flicked at the arm. Chapel House drops the ball. And with that, you feel like the game probably is now gone for Oldham. Yeah. Swinton in no rush to make anything happen here. Just work it through the phases, complete the sets. Williams again bringing it back on the inside. We've really seen the value tonight of having that kind of big physical style winger. He can come in and help, and they're through again here. He's got players left and right in the end, keeps it to himself. Maybe Dan Abram was the option there. It was Andrew Badrock off the bench who made the break. Swinton with an opportunity to stretch their lead out even further, but Hall drops it. They've really looked threatening on the right edge. You know, the youngster there, Andrew Bardrock and Jake Spedding, both piercing the line. Just left it behind there. Lewis Hall, probably his only bad moment of the game so far. Yeah, he's been really industrious when he's been carrying the ball. Should have been a late footwork, but the amount of work he's got through for his team, and he's been a link with the pivots as well. You know, ball playing loose forward, doing massive minutes. On that occasion, you can let him off to 75 minutes, dropping the ball. He might be someone that comes into your consideration, Kevin. I'm going to ask you to start having a think about your bet Fred player of the match. Come to you in a few minutes for that one. Logan Astley. He's had a difficult afternoon, hasn't he, Logan Astley? Swinton kick chase has been superb. He's been under a lot of pressure. Wildly acting half. He plays it to Jamie Ellis. Ellis out the back to Craven. Craven to Astley. Astley gives it to Jordan Turner. Turner just gets his head down. Swinton's defence is there. He gets the offload away. And it's great defence again. And it's scrambled defence. Yeah, they have. It's an interception. Crimes coming off the line. Well met by the Oldham defence. Forced him back to when he's got towards his own goal line, but he stays in the field of play. So Swinton now. Just keeping it up the middle, up the jumper. Oh, once again, Ball just getting through again, just getting through the line. line. Not the biggest, but it's got real good late footwork. Caused a lot of problems tonight. Patton thought about the long pass, goes for the cross kick. Playing a little bit now, Swinton, it could be on here. Now Williams gets the ball in space, and he's gone past the goal row, and he's just brought down with Jamie Ellis in the end with the ankle tap tackle. Well, Swinton great, just chancing yeah. their arm a little bit in the late stages. This is the last. Patton again spins a long ball out, takes a bounce. In the end, Badrock picks it up. He now brings it out to Crimes on the right hand side of the offload. Nearly came off for Swinton. Well, they're having fun now. They've earned the right, haven't they? And Deck Patton just showing he's got all the box of tricks. He looked to do the pass, they shot up, put it on the boot. Jaden and I went down the touchline and found the experience of Reese Williams, who cut back inside. Unfortunately for Swinton, they just couldn't make anything from it. Right then, Kev, you've had a couple of minutes to think about it. A few contenders. Who is your bet, Fred, player of the match? Yeah, it's been a, a difficult one tonight. There's been a couple of good players. I think Dan Abrams has been you know, a standout, and so has uh, Lewis Hall. But for me, my bet, Fred, Challenge Cup player of the match tonight is the number seven, Deck Patton. Yeah. Or oh, the number six, sorry. Number six, Deck Patton. Can't argue too much with that at all. He's been excellent with ball in hand and off the boot. Some, some big defensive efforts in there as well from Patton. We've seen him plenty of times in the Super League. Now he's lighting up the Betfred Challenge Cup with Swinton, who march on to the fourth round. They will be back here in a few weeks' time. And you just feel that it started so well from him. His first touch of the game was a try assist. He's kicked the ball fantastically well. You know, out of hand and off the tee. And that's the reason tonight, I just think he's pulled the strings and he's been a different class tonight. A Challenge Cup winner. I'm not sure they'll do that this year. 
they definitely progress to the next round. Well, you never know. Sheffield here in the next round. And then the Super League clubs join us in round six. Yeah. And Swinton will feel that they've got every Ooh. chance of joining them in that round. Be a fantastic game, that, by the way. Swinton versus Sheffield. Two really promising championship clubs. Yeah, and they're still going at each other, Lawton and Patton. It's been a great battle all night between them two. So Wildy on his bag, scooting from Demi Half and gets a penalty for his efforts. I know we mentioned it earlier, but I'd just like to point out again, been really impressed by this referee, Kev. Yeah, no, he's, he's controlled the game. I think he's shown a fair amount of patience. The players have respected him, and when he's needed to blow the whistle, he has done. But we've been talking about the rugby and not the referee tonight, oh, which is a great... drop from Danny Craven. <coughs> and Oldham, well, they look like a beaten team now. It's just not happened tonight. Right from the kickoff, and you know, when you do stuff like that, it can sap the energy. It almost burst the balloon. It's funny, isn't it? Because when they scored that try just before half time, they were right back in it. And for the first 10, 15 minutes of the second half, it looked like they were the only team that were going to score. Swinton got them on the sucker punch, and they've not really been able to recover from that. And I think that's why Swinton have, have prided themselves on tonight. It's been defensive, you know, resilience and character. They've been tested over and over again, but when it's almost a frustration that they couldn't get through the line, Oldham. And then it got even worse because they went down the other end and conceded. So Swinton just going through the motions in the dying phases of this one. They'll be very, very pleased with the night's work. Excellent in defence, clinical in attack. And yes, a couple of errors from Oldham, a couple of gifts helped them get off to this start. But they've led from the front pretty much for 80 minutes in this game. It's just been a real professional performance. I thought they've kicked the ball really well. Once again, that's another There's great game. Astley deals with it on this occasion. There's a fight going on the floor after the whistle. Well, it's all kicking off here. The referee's given a penalty. We've got a little bit of afters. We've got players running onto the field. The hoot has gone. So I don't know if we're going to have the penalty. There's people on the pitch. But it is going to be the Swinton Lions who will advance to the fifth round of the Betfred Challenge Cup. A really strong performance from them. A lot of talk coming into this game about Oldham, what they might do with those results against Barrow and Halifax, and could it be another scalp for them as we just see frustrations boiling over. There's been a bit of needle in this game all night, haven't there? Played in the right spirit for the majority. Some big physical contests. All smiles now from Deck Patton and the team. <laughs> there is the full-time whistle. We kicked it into touch. There's all sorts of people on the pitch. But we are at the conclusion of this one. Swinton Lions 28, Oldham 12, a thoroughly entertaining Challenge Cup affair on a Sunday night. Pleasure to bring it to you here on The Sportsman. And Kev, a lot of effort, a lot of endeavour, a lot of promise from Oldham, but ultimately not clinical enough. Not clinical enough, and, and we mentioned it before, I think you've got to give a huge pat on the back to Alan Kilshaw, how he's got his team up for this game. You know, they were under, the, under a lot of pressure tonight, being the team that's in the championship. But Oldham made no mistake about it, they have got a championship quality side. So here's the tail <laughs> off the tape. Huge defensive effort that from Swinton, a real telling moment really, because Oldham had been on top. Yeah, you, you can just felt if they'd have scored off this opportunity, the tide was turning. Well, Jake's bed in take a bow because he saved the try there, and then not long after he scores a try. But this is the try that Lewis Hall gets on the back of a great kick from George Robert, and you can see how much it means. They just changed the point of attack, don't they? They've been going through pattern on those fifth tackle options all game, and then a clever little kick from Roby, and then this. This, this is, is just sensational. Pitch. You just Superb. see him slow up, drop the hammer down and put it into fifth gear. And for me, the try of the game. 
and a great play. He's shown he can attack tonight, but he's also shown he can defend. And that was a beautiful bit of pace. He just sizes Astley up, doesn't he? He makes the initial break here. It's the anticipation to, to, to push on the support. And then Thanks, there, uh, bang, bang, hits the afterburners all the way through. And that's a quick player he goes round too. He goes round Logan Astley. Logan Astley is a very, very quick player in his own right. And that's another way to score a try. There's the try, and it's just this little bit here. Chapel out. Earns him some time in the bin. I'm not sure he's done anything there to get warranted well, a sin bin. I think, it's the, I think it's the conversation that he then has with the referee that lands him in hot water. I think it may have been dissent that he ends up in the book for here. But this try, you just felt maybe the door was opening for, for Oldham there, but... And that's criminal. When the momentum is, you know, he's saying a push, but when the momentum is just going in your favour and then that goes against you, you know, down to 12 men, they couldn't, you know, put any fight back on. That was the game. So there we have it. Swindon go through to the next round. They will play Sheffield Eagles here at Hayward Road in a few weeks' time. And then after that, the big boys come in, the Super League clubs join the competition. And we can go pitch side now to hear from the player of the match, Deck Patton. Deck, here we go with the interview. First of all, many, many congratulations. You've just won yourself the player of the match there. Oh, cheers, thank you. Yeah, um, couldn't give it anyone really there. We've got a good team performance. So, especially with our middles here, yeah, they did a tough job. And, did, did a, <laughs> Yeah, they did a good job on their middles and set the platform for us back. Yeah, obviously you get a bit of stick there from, from, from the fans. Yeah, sure. just, just, just how big a part have these fans played today in that? Yeah, definitely. You could hear them as you can now. There's no point in me even talking, is there? <laughs> obviously, we're, we're struggling for these guys behind us, but yeah. Dick, how are you finding life, obviously, with the Lions in the Championship, following on from a great career that you've had at Super League level? Um, you know, it's, 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 I, I've really enjoyed it. You know, I'm starting to enjoy my rugby again, finally, and... Obviously, it's showing that these these past few games, um, you know, it was top top club, but the, the, the lads are so great as well. Not to say they never have been anywhere else, but I've really found my home here, and I'm just enjoying my rugby again. And obviously, you personally, you've had a great performance today. But what about your teammates out there? There seems to be an awful lot of spirit within this yeah, Swinton Lions camp yeah, at the and, moment, and that's exactly what I mean. You know, it, it, we're not a team of individuals; it's all of us. That's why I would say you could give this to anyone. Uh, they dig hard for each other, you know, we went in at half time and give it ourselves a bit even though we were up. But you know, these these like well, what was it three, four games now we've had, we're showing real team spirit. Dick, many thanks for joining us. We're bringing your head coach you. now, Alan Kilshaw. Uh, Alan, first of all, you obviously made a, a fantastic start to the to the campaign this season, but just what about that performance out there today? Yeah, defensively really good. I think we can make things easier for ourselves at times. We make it hard. I think the period before our time when we we really had them on the rack. I think it was um, you know 12 nil or 14 nil at the time, and we just yeah we just we lost our way a little bit in yardage and started making errors and giving penalties away, and we invited pressure, and that sort of came into the the second half. But the way we defended our goal line was outstanding. And then to come up the other end and find a way to score, and then spending try was outstanding as well. So very proud coach tonight. Well, you probably were a little bit disappointed with the try that you did concede just before half-time. I'm guessing as a coach that possibly played right into your hands. It's obviously, you had a great lead, 14-0, a very early lead, and then you can go in at half-time at 14-6, but still get into the players to lift them again. Yeah, yeah, I did have to raise my voice a little bit as well. They, they just turned on each other a little bit when, when they'd been so good and so connected, and they, they, knew, they knew as well. There's some really experienced players in there, and they knew where they'd gone wrong, and I was disappointed how we started the second half with the ball, but the way we defended our goal, and like you say, and then we come up and found a way to score a score a try. And look, no one no one picked us today to win, and we'll just keep being the underdogs and, and, and playing with that mentality. As I mentioned right at the beginning of this interview, that the uh, the performance out there, but not just out there, the whole season, um, the defensive product that you have there on the field, it looks a lot of fitness, a lot of team spirit. Uh, it really looks good. That, you know what you've got going here at the moment. Yeah, early rounds is you know it's, well, I'm saying early rounds, but we're not even into the season yet. But early games, you know, February, March, it's all about defence and fitness, and 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 that's 
been evident there today. If you've got that that recipe, our attack will get better. You know, we'll get on some fields hopefully in the week and, and some dry and it'll dry up and our attack will get better because you've seen the, the, the colour of player we've got then we can attack. But that that defence and that fitness, that's our culture right there. That's something we've worked on since November and that's why I'm really proud. You know, Ando working really hard with him defensively and, and Darren on the attack side and, and Miles and Dougie. So it's a real staff effort uh, and I couldn't be prouder of him. And finally, Alan, I've no doubt that you won't want to look too far ahead, but uh, obviously confidence is real sky high at the moment. You got off to a fantastic start. Next two games, Bradford away in the 1895 Cup, and now you know that you're playing Sheffield Eagles at home in what will be an absolute cracker by the looks of things here in two weeks' time. Yeah, definitely, and I'm glad we've got Sheffield, otherwise we'll have to go and watch my lad playing White Haven, so I won't be able to get to that one now. We've got Sheffield, but no, on a on a um, you know serious note, the, the two the, the two ties, and we want to be competing at that top end of the championship, you know, and, and you know next, next two games will, will give us a good measure of where we're at. Alan, thanks for joining us and all the very best for the rest of the season. Cheers, mate. Well, Swinton head coach Alan Kilshaw and before that, player of the match, Declan Patton, will be very, very happy with their evening's work. 28 points to 12 win against local rivals Oldham. They have to do a lot of defensive work. That scoreline probably doesn't tell the story of the certainly the second half, Kev, but errors killer in the end for Oldham. Yeah, it was, a, it was a potential banana skin this round, wasn't it, against the, the near rivals, Oldham, with the quality that was in that side, and I thought they won that on sheer desire, the way they defended the line over and over again. There was a period in that second half where I think we counted four penalties, you know, back-to-back -back is normally difficult, but back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back is, is normally a score, and, and the way that they held out, and, you know, it wasn't all perfect for, for Swinton today, but as a team... I think they all stood up and contributed to a fantastic performance. Alan Kilshaw, they're rightfully so, he's happy you know, that they're into the next round and they will take some beating you know, here against Sheffield when they're in town because Swinton are a good side. We saw some you know, real creative stuff from the halfbacks, Dan Abram, real lively, and then the hookers when, when George Robey was introduced. I just think they've got a fantastic balance to the side, but they've also got a real work ethic of undertone that are great for this club. Well, a brilliant evening's entertainment here at Hayward Road. Swinton Lions march on to the next round of the Betfred Challenge Cup. They will play Sheffield Eagles here in a couple of weeks' time. Kev, thank you as ever for joining us. Thank you at home for tuning in. We'll be back with more. We'll let you know which game we're picking up in the next round as soon as we do. In the meantime, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Plenty on the way. The last tackle as ever, 6 o'clock Wednesday night. We'll see you then. Have a good evening. That is a remarkable finish. Burke, Burke goes for the corner and Leah Burke's in. And it's Tamsin Renew. The pass from Harley Dodd. And this could be the first score of the game because London are going to get them and touch down. He's gone for the same ball and it's gone. Oh, beautiful. They might score the winner. And North Wales have another. Brings it up to the line, drops it off to Hazard who reaches through.